Every month, the Royal Mail issues a set of stamps to celebrate the UK and its national character. In 2015, these special stamps, as they're now known, will be celebrating their 50th anniversary. Before 1965, the Royal Mail issued commemorative stamps. Now, these designs, which are often very symbolic or highly stylized, were there to mark outstanding events and royal or postal anniversaries. With the new government of late 1964, a new Postmaster General was appointed, Tony Benn. Seen as a moderniser, Benn soon announced revised criteria for special stamp issues. He decided they would celebrate events of national importance, commemorate important anniversaries, reflect Britain's contribution to the arts and world affairs, and extend public patronage to the arts. These criteria have remained largely unchanged to this day. For the last 50 years, Royal Mail stamps have been reflecting changes in British society and culture at large. In the 1960s, stamps used to celebrate British technological innovations. An early set from 1966 featured the Jodrell Bank radio telescope, the car industry and hovercraft. And in 2015, stamps will be featuring another British technological innovation that has changed all of our lives, the World Wide Web. Popular culture has also been charted through Royal Mail stamps. In 1988, a set was brought out to commemorate the bicentenary of Australia, and those also featured great British cultural figures. John Lennon made his first appearance on a stamp. It was 20 years later, the Beatles would feature on their own stamp issue, and this remains the most popular of the last decade. It's also one of the first to feature identifiable living people who aren't members of the royal family. Stamps celebrating Harry Potter, Doctor Who, and children's TV icons like Bagpuss have also proved hugely popular. The way Shakespeare and his work has been commemorated over the years shows just how much Royal Mail stamps have changed. In 1982, there was a set on performing arts and that featured a colorful painting of Hamlet. 30 years later, a photograph of Scottish actor David Tennant playing the Prince of Denmark was used instead. Another hugely popular subject is sport. I've got a great stamp here. In 1966, when England won the Football World Cup, a stamp with the words England winners over printed on it was rushed out. And it sold millions in days. Four years later, stamps to mark Edinburgh hosting the Commonwealth Games used then state-of-the-art time-lapse photography to show athletes in motion. For London 2012, Royal Mail undertook its most ambitious feat of organisation for stamps so far. Every Team GB Olympic and Paralympic British gold medal winner at the London 2012 Games was recognised with a special stamp. The winner's stamps were designed, printed and put on sale in post offices up and down the UK the day after victory. It was a triumph of logistical planning that caught the mood of the nation. Of course, some things have remained constant over time, and one of them is Britain's respect and affection for its monarchy. Her Majesty the Queen is the single most featured individual ever on Royal Mail stamps. Stamps have been issued to commemorate her birthdays, anniversaries and special occasions, to reflect her lifelong service and also to celebrate events within the life of the royal family. Because Royal Mail invented the postage stamp, Britain stands alone in not having to print the country of origin on them. All other countries must carry their name on their stamps. By contrast, an image of the monarch is the sole internationally recognised symbol that the stamp is from the UK. Royal Mail stamps have been called paper ambassadors. Once affixed to a letter or parcel, they can travel around the world portraying something of the sending country. And this is why, for 50 years, 
Royal Mail has paid so much attention to the stamps that illustrate, in so many ways, the best of British. You can browse through 50 years of special stamps on the Royal Mail website.